Allen has taken care of this part of it, so uh, I need a motion to accept and approve the consent agenda. I will move to approve the consent agenda as amended with the removal of item 3HBC19-16. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All in, I am ready. Oh, very good. Thank you. Okay, so now we will go ahead and proceed with the work session agenda, which is actually the presentation for the public meeting. I'm also going to hit record on this other one, too, if, if you don't mind. So uh, the purpose of this work session is to, oh, thank you. It's a little iffy. The purpose of this work session is to update uh, not just the public, but the Historic Preservation Commissioners themselves about the status of this project. So and also to enable the commissioners to speak about what this project means to them and also uh, what they've heard from their constituents that is other like-minded individuals and organizations in the community such as uh, historic public inc or river renewal authority uh, history connections the el pueblo museum and the such and the like so um, following the agenda up here the, the special agenda that was available to our audience um, so I just wanted to briefly introduce uh, for the members of the audience in the room and the folks recording, uh, members of our commission um, and, and their background. So just briefly. Uh, so we have uh, Chairperson Laurel Campbell, uh, who has a background in history and preservation, uh, has, has consulted on um, uh, nominations for historic registers, and is currently involved in uh, restoration of the Goodnight Barn. And our new, newly elected vice chair is Karen Knight, who, is, who has uh, expertise in interior design and a passion for historic preservation as well. And over here we have Anthony Perko, who's an attorney in, in the city of Pueblo and uh, is one of our newer commissioners today. And I uh, used to reside in a historic place in his younger days as well. That's right, yeah. Which is on the National Register list of places. Um, and then uh, Jason Falsetto, uh, is a graduate of uh, CSU Pueblo Engineering, Civil Engineering. Yes. And uh, also we have Gregory Howe, who is also a great passion for historic preservation, he used to live on the Tut building at the Central Plaza, and is involved in a great deal of initiatives here in town. And he's one of our new members as well. So I just wanna give each commissioner a chance to share what this project means to them and what they've heard, uh, just for maybe a couple moments, maybe a minute or so each, if that's okay, all right? So, yeah. Well, as a uh, preservationist and historian, uh, I am proud to uh, support this. Uh, I supported the uh, historic district on the north side, and uh, we have several others in town that are important. Um, my personal feeling on this is it's about time. Uh, we've had so many changes downtown that have not been great, and we need to make sure that this doesn't happen any further. Um, we know that it's going to be a great, uh, it'll be a, 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 play, a destination place for people to come who love history and preservation. Our architecture is special uh, and it all needs to be saved. We had a period in our time in the 60s and 70s when buildings were just indiscriminately turned, torn down for uh, new, new wonderful new pro uh, uh, buildings and um, I always felt that we should work together on that. So hopefully this will help stave off any more of that and uh, I'm just really proud to, I, I won't say I'm a big part of it, but I will certainly support it in, um, on our end as a commission. Thank you. Thank you, Laurel. Uh, Ms. Karen, would you like to share? Preserving the buildings, making sure that we, um, like Laurel said, you know, we had buildings being torn down, buildings not being put back properly. So, um, as a member of this commission, I really, really support this project. Thank you, Karen. Uh, Anthony. Yes, thank you. Um, as an historian, or at least an interested historian, I'm very proud to support this initiative and this project. Uh, as Laurel said, it's a long time in coming. 
Uh, Lewis Sullivan once said that every city, whether large or small, should have its own feel, uh, if not, which does not necessarily mean the same thing as its own style of architecture. In my view, the downtown area is the best example of what this city has in this respect, and I think that the uh, benefits of this project uh, will go long, long, long way towards maintaining that for future generations. Thank you, Anthony. Jason. Well, first, I'm a proud sixth generation Puebloan. My family's been here for almost 140 years. So we've been here since almost the beginning, and I'm proud to see where we've come and what we have also preserved and what we can preserve. I'm excited to see our citizens learn and understand the importance of our buildings and their history in order to preserve, promote, and innovate our historic downtown, which I also agree to be one of the best areas preserved in the United States. Um, so hopefully we can rival the vibrancy of other downtowns who have been this successful, and I'm proud to support this endeavor for the foreseeable future. Thank you, Jason. Gregory. Um, I can't say I've been here for six generations. I've only been here for eight years, but I was spoiled. Um, my very first office was the Federal Room in the historic Federal Building at Fifth and Main. And that magical building designed by William Mark Nakin was my first entree into the magic of the structures that exist in downtown and all throughout Union and even throughout other parts of the city. Um, I'm a, a lecturer in the creative economy and when I talk about history, culture, and the arts, there's a magical kind of sweet spot um, with adaptive reuse of historic properties, economic redevelopment, and tourism. And I find that this project just reinforces those three tenets, and it's the main reason that I joined the commission. Alan, may I add one more comment? Sure. Um, I'm so glad you brought up William B. Sullivan. I'm from Chicago, and he was a Chicago architect. And I'm proud to know that he designed a building here, a couple, I guess. Um, but this is another part of the history that's important to other people. Um, I think we've forgotten some names of early settlers and the people that brought our business, our business into Pueblo and made it what it is. And um, I think that's just as important as saving the buildings. So thank you. Great. And um, thank you all for sharing your thoughts on that. And I uh, and, uh, just want to inform you that we had a brief press conference before the meeting started and we had the opportunity to, uh, I had the opportunity to share the project with um, uh, ABC and Channel 5, and um, and I appreciate their time on that. And I also wanted to briefly highlight uh, back in April of 2019, John Rodriguez uh, for the Paul Pack had a very thoughtful piece about his uh, memory when he was a child uh, at the Woolworths on Main Street in Pueblo. Uh, the title of the uh, editorial is Chili's Highway, Chili Highways, Main Streets, and America's Loneliness Road. Uh, I, I thought that was very thoughtful and indicative of what we're doing here because he also calls out other towns such as Salida and Westcliff and, and Florence uh, and, and how they've managed to uh, uh, document the history of their downtowns and, and leverage that for their revitalization and economic development. Um, the other thing I wanted to share also, with, uh, I recognize in the room uh, a few members of the audience. I, I see uh, Bill Zwick who's helped me with this project uh, and um, who's the capital uh, projects manager in our, our department and um, a great deal of experience and a lot of his work uh, has been influential for all, a lot of historic preservation projects in this department. And I'm um, Margaret uh, ward Maseas, the Executive Director of Downtown Association. Thank you for being here too. A uh, great partner on this project as well. Um, always welcoming uh, when we go to their uh, banquets and, and breakfasts and luncheons and, and meetings. They're always great to see them. Um, and uh, Andrea uh, De La Garza from the Urban Renewal Authority, thank you for being here as well. Also a good partner for this project. And, um, but I just also wanted to encourage in the viewing audience, uh, people watching, that if there's any time you want to share your thoughts about this project, your questions, your concerns, or reach out to us anytime at hpc at pueblo.us. That's uh, HPC for Historic Preservation Commission, hpc at pueblo.us. And uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, one thing I've given the commissioners as well is this little uh, one-pager. It says, Historic Downtown Pueblo. Uh, something to take home, I call this homework. Um, and I actually shared this with the members of the Downtown Association as well. Uh, it's basically what it means to you, what Historic Downtown means to you. Also, the members of the public are welcome to fill this out too. Uh, it's about what, it, what does it look like, what does it sound like, what, is it, what does it play like? Uh, what does it look like today, 2019? Uh, and what is it look like, feel like, what does it smell like, taste like?
tomorrow, 2030. Just a little informal exercise, because uh, I think having a vision of what our stakeholders and citizens and tourists feel and see could help inform us on how we use this knowledge in the future. Um, so I don't think I have anything further as far as uh, press conference, but um, as far as uh, anyone in the room, in the audience, uh, and in the room are welcome to share any thoughts or concerns or questions they may have. Uh, is anyone in the room want to share any comments or questions? All right, all right, seeing none, that's all right, because I know we've all talked quite a lot already. So uh, I just wanted to uh, brief everyone that the uh, consultants uh, from Logan Simpson uh, ha have uh, reported back in the status of the project. They have a completed draft survey forms of the 15 different places, and I have conveyed those draft survey forms to our uh, stakeholders, some of the stakeholders who expressed interest in uh, reading uh, the drafts and giving comment. And already Margaret's provided great uh, knowledge and corrections and, and observations, so I appreciate that very much. Uh, but at, at any time, I'd say within the rest of October, uh, comments on those drafts are welcome. So, so I will reach out again to the stakeholders and invite them for, for feedback. And if you'd like to, if any of if any of you, or if you want to point to the person who wants to be responsible for it, <laughs> you can you can do it too. I, I think Laurel, you uh, might have been involved in the part one project for looking at the drafts. Yeah. So uh, if if you would, would you mind uh, looking at the drafts once more for the next round? Sure. And would any, any of you you like to see them too? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Karen, would you like to see them too? Sure. Okay. I'll send it all to you. Great. All right. Well. This concludes the work session item about the downtown project. Uh, is there any questions from the commissioners at this time? No. Any questions from uh, Acting Director Scott Hobson? My superior? Mike, might uh, review kind of the next steps that the consultants could be going through to be able to look forward to prior to the end of the year? Sure. Yes, yeah, Scott had asked, asked me to just briefly touch upon the next steps. So uh, so the next steps uh, in, in, in uh, advance of our third public meeting, uh, we'll report on the, re the uh, revisions of the draft uh, of, the, of the 15 different places for a final draft. Also concurrently, a, a draft narrative, uh, sort of an addendum to the narrative context. So the part one project had an 80 some page narrative about historic downtown. So we will have a additional addendum um, additional material that will speak more about the commercial evolution, commercial development of downtown, and also uh, some interesting narratives uh, about uh, ethnicities in downtown. I actually have, uh, I reached out to uh, um, Lucille Corsentino of the Rose Lawn Cemetery and other stakeholders, and actually in the room is Ray Brown, who is uh, also uh, an enthusiastic historian, great researcher, and he's helped me I gleaned some information about uh, black Americans in downtown Pueblo, town of Pueblo, which I think will be informative too. So I want to see, which I'm going to share with the consultants. So if we get a distinct narratives, discrete narratives of ethnicities, uh, and not just black Americans, but Irish, Italian, uh, any, any ethnicity uh, of people who lived and worked there, I think that'll be interesting because it's, uh, it provides more knowledge and understanding of our history in the city of Pueblo. And and what I think, personally, it's very impressive that you see an integrated uh, culture uh, of ethnicities that's so far. So I'd like to learn more about that. Five um, black men and women here around in the 1860s. 1870. How many people like actually live here? How many people were living? Like 25 of these, but how many people? I actually, uh, if we go back to the census report, I could actually tell you that. And if you give me about 10 minutes, I could run down to my truck and grab the, grab the sheet. I was interested in the African-American population, um, but we were a very small percentage of the, of the total. Okay. Okay. We had a Chinese population, too. Yes, we did. And you said you went on Ancestry.com. Were you able to, were you able to detect any modern-day descendants of that original 25 or so? No, not as yet. Um, I'm still hopeful that we'll find people. However, with uh, the closing of CF and I and uh, the PAD and things like that, I think a lot of those people actually exited uh, the Pueblo area, and and so it's more difficult to locate those people as of right now. Uh, but but I have reached out to some of the families that 
our long uh, standing families in the, in the Pueblo area, and they've provided me with a tremendous amount of information. Uh, so it's, it's quite fun. So he's got a he's got a great resource. Uh, I might actually interview him separately too because he's got a great deal of information. There's <laughs> another doc. There's another document. Um, I did a, an exhibition at the Steelworks Center of the West several years ago on the immigration report from 1923 to 1924, which was the year before the Exclusionary Act, and it took all 10,823 workers of the steel mill and also the mines. And it broke down every single ethnic group and where they worked. And I know with African Americans, there are about 482 in 1923 to 1924 that were working in the mill and also in the mines. So I would love to see that. Document. I'll get you the document I can email to you. That would be a awesome. There's a YouTube video also that I produced on that exhibition. So I'll get that information to you. Do you need my business card? Yes. Give it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And I want to also add that uh, part of the reason why I'm doing this and inviting, you know, examining ethnic communities is because the uh, National Park Service actually created a policy uh, recommendation that when we do these things, these grant projects, that we do have our best to include ethnicities and minorities. So very important in Pueblo. At one time, I don't know if any, and I know this is off of our HPC subject, but it's it's interesting and it needs to be known. At one time, there were 32 different language newspapers in Pueblo. So that tells you how many, how our ethnicity was spread out. Anyway, so are we back to the yep. agenda? Yep, yeah. I, I want to make sure we got, we give it plenty of time for P and Z, but it looks like we're on schedule for sure. We might even be ahead of schedule, so. Great, okay.